Hello, we are live on this Friday for our Freedom Fridays with Dana Lee. I'm Dana Lee, your host. I'm the diet recovery coach. I help women heal from decades of dieting damage. I specifically help women in their 40s, their 50s, even in their 60s who have that history of yo-yo, on again, off again, gaining weight, losing weight. Um, you know the story well. So happy to have you here today. If you're here live, say hello. If you're on the replay, hashtag replay. So I know your eyeballs were on this video. So last week I was a guest on a podcast and um, it was a podcast that focused on healing from all different types of addiction. So I came on to speak specifically on food addiction and it was a delightful conversation on a very heavy topic. Um, uh, Randy Morton, Morton, um, he hosts a Courageous Recovery podcast, and he helps with all, all different types of addiction. Um, he himself was an alcoholic, but there's all different, um, all different things we can be addicted to in our society, right? So I want to talk about food addiction like part two, because I feel like we had such a great conversation, but there was so much more I wanted to say and give you more framework and solutions as to what to do from here. If you're someone who not only like thinks they have a food addiction, but there may be cer certain specific foods that you feel are, you are addicted to. They have like power over you. So if that's the case, um, I'm glad you're here and I'm going to give you, um, a four step, um, process, I guess you could say I'm using the acronym STOP. S-T-O-P. Okay, so it's going to be super simple, yet you, we know sometimes the simplest things aren't always the easiest things. And this is what I'm here for, right? I'm here to help your life become easier through something that's really may feel chaotic, may feel really hard. May, you may feel lost. You may feel stuck in this, like, I don't know how to get out. I don't have the answers. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help your life become easier for you to actually resolve this, even if you've struggled for decades. So um, so if you are here, say hello. I actually, I'm just going to pull up my video here on Facebook to also, just to make sure I can see all my comments. Um, excellent, excellent. All right, so, so say hi. So I know I'm not just talking to myself here, <laughs> which I, you know, gotten really good at over the years with doing video for as long as I have. Um, however, I really love interaction and I would really love uh, for you to not only comment and say hi, but also share this video with someone that you care about who may be struggling or maybe you've had these private conversations about food addiction or compulsive eating or something and don't know how to get out. So also feel free to share this video with somebody, um, even if it's like in a private message, right? A, a little direct, you know, direct message. So hello, hello. Um, hi, Emily. Hello. Good to have you today. Okay, cool. So I'm going to dive right in. All right. We're going to go over STOP, um, the acronym that is going to help you stop the food addiction cycle. So the first one, S. So the first step there is to be willing to see that the behavior is causing a problem in making progress in your life. So this is kind of like that first step with awareness. Like you have to just admit there's a problem. Um, what will happen oftentimes with food addiction or addictions in general is that yeah, yeah, it's this thing that I do to cope with my life, but it's not really getting in the way. It's not really, I can kind of manage it. Like it doesn't really stop me from moving forward. However, you'll eventually get to a precipice where there you cannot deny it anymore because it's now uh, stopping you from maybe even getting that promotion at work. Because if you have some sort of shameful behavior that is in place, how you show up in your daily life is going, it's going to show in that you won't feel confident. You'll uh, maybe feel like you're second guessing yourself. You'll have an issue with boundaries. So this is how it may look. Okay. And, and if any of these things do resonate, then please share them because you're in good company. Hi, Jane. Hi. 
<laughs> so you're in good company here. We're all here to talk about this. So we learn and we explore it. There is no, no shame here. I love you exactly where you're at and I understand it. Okay. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to speak about it with this level of emotional intelligence because I've been there and was there for a very long time. So now I'm on the other side and now I help other women heal. So the first thing we need to do is actually see how it's starting to, it's blocking you at every turn. It's like every time you go to, like, you can't create a healthy relationship. How do you have a healthy, intimate relationship if there is compulsive food issues that you feel ashamed of? And therefore you're like, oh my God, I'm gaining weight. I don't feel good about myself. How you show up in an intimate relationship is going to be impacted by that. So that is why S stands for C. You have to see it. You have to see that it is a problem. So T, this brings us to T. We have to talk about what is eating you, not what you're eating. So many times I see this out there that it is more about, well, track your macros, count your calories, get, get your food, your tracker, you know, calories in, calories out. We try to manage the food and we don't try to manage our feelings. And that's the problem. So we need to talk about this. But here's the other really important part of tea. We need to talk about it with someone who I would say you feel, you feel safe with, but also that someone who has gotten to the other side. To talk about it with a friend who's also struggling, it ends up becoming the blind leading the blind. It is the, um, and I hope I'm allowed to say that these days, I don't know, but <laughs> I'm doing my best. I think we're all doing our best to try to navigate this. Um, so it is um, not helpful to talk about it with someone else who doesn't have answers. So then all, all that ends up happening is you're stuck in the cycle because you're talking about the same things over and over and over because neither one of you really have answers. So not only do you want to talk about what's eating you, not what you're eating. I don't care about the food that you're addicted to. I don't care if it's chocolate chip cookies or if it's potato chips or if it's um, a steak. Like it doesn't matter to me. The food is not what's important. What's important is what is eating you. What is what are you festering inside with emotion and anger and resentment and all this all these feelings that are really uncomfortable? That's the stuff you need to get out. But need to talk about it with somebody who's safe, who's professional, who's a professional, who also has made it to the other side of the recovery. Has made it to the other side of food recovery. That is key. You can talk about it over and over and over, but if it's with somebody who is doesn't have the answers, then it's not going to be helpful. And then it's just going to be a big, I hate to say it, but a big bitch fest. Like that's all it's going to be is like just bitching and complaining and staying in the problem, right? But neither one of you know how to get out of it, right? So um, yeah, friends often enable unconsciously. I agree with you, Deb, because um, I think friends mean well, but there's this weird thing in our culture in our diet culture, that we have kind of made it cool to talk about this, like to talk about dieting and losing weight and, oh, I can't even keep that in my house. It somehow is a little bit of a badge of honor or some way that we fit into society by having the, we commiserate around the same problem. So sometimes like our own friends don't even see that and they mean well right? So I'm not blaming your friends or anyone else in your community that this is what I've struggled with. Like I, I wanted to talk about it, but no one in my realm, like everyone was swimming in the diet culture. So <laughs> nobody could give anyone else any answers, right? So, um, so that is key. So thanks for adding that, Deb. Okay, let's bring us, let's uh, take it on to O. So S-T-O. O stands for observe. So here is what's really important with food addiction and addictive behaviors to a particular food. We think that to break the cycle, it has to happen in the episode, if that's what you want to call it, of the food behavior. While you're in that compulsion of the food calling to you and you have no control over it, I see this many times and I've seen YouTube videos about it too, about stopping that energy right in its tracks. Now that does happen 
However, in my program and with my clients, we have to have other things set up before you can even get to that awareness in that moment. So here's why observe is important for you right now in that I want you to focus on observing between the addictive food behavior. Observe the patterns that are happening in between that. So if you're someone who identifies with, oh, I'm a stress eater. So to me, that is okay. That's a start. However, what does stress mean? What does that mean exactly? So observing how you're interacting with others and what is creating that stress inside you that makes you compelled to look to food for a, in a way that you think is going to solve what happened in this other dynamic of this other situation that, that happened earlier in your day. So it's observing in between, right? Between the eating behaviors, because you're just looking for a coping me mechanism that maybe the answer really is, I really want to learn how to speak up for myself. And I really want to learn how to advocate or feel like I can speak my mind or be who I really am. But I'm intimidated. I'm scared to do it. I'm afraid I'll get yelled at. So all of that's going on in between the food behaviors. So to manipulate the food behavior, or try to stop that in the compulsion is a losing battle. Um, so I have my clients observe, like we, we take a few steps back to understand, oh, what are those patterns? Wasn't that interesting? And we look at that. So we observe in a way, I also want to add this before I move on to our P and our STOP uh, acronym, that this step is important for the learning process so you don't get pulled into, oh, look how much I suck. <laughs> we'll always find a case for that. <laughs> you know, that's not what this step is about. The observe is really like, huh, can I actually step outside of myself a little bit so I can look at what's going on without getting pulled in with too much emotion. So that way I can create an awareness of some situational like problem solving, right? So I can actually understand and identify some things because I'm not in it so much. I'm, I'm stepping outside to look at it. And that takes a lot of practice. I'm not going to lie. It takes a lot of practice because when you're in it so much, it feels like what's happening it is you. Um, so over time, and this is what I work on with my clients, it's like separating yourself a little bit like, huh, isn't that interesting? That behavior, look at, look at what happened at this fight at work and how I wish I was showing up a different way, yet I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave, I had a stressful day at work. I'm just going to bucket it into stress. And then the, then you get home and there's just nighttime snacking and there's the compulsion and there's the drawing to food. But in that moment at night, you can't stop it. Because really what needs to happen is during the day, as these things come up, we have interactions with our coworkers and with our family and all different places we're put in stress. We need to learn how to equip ourselves to speak our mind, set our, set our boundaries. And actually, just I just read from a friend, um, which is so true. Boundaries are a skill. They are not a rule book. And I thought that was fucking brilliant because I was like, that is, that is exactly right. Boundary is boundaries are skill set. So I teach my clients the skill of boundaries and, and to know and how to navigate that. And that's huge. Okay. So how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing so far? Hi, Marie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good to see so many live viewers today. Hi. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's get, get on to P. So S T O P. P is to make a plan with a professional. I I can't emphasize this enough. This problem of food addiction is not going to go away on its own. It's not. You can look back. Hi, Lori. You can look back on your own patterns and trying to solve things on your own. It's just not how we work in humanity. 
we're meant to come together as a tribe. We're meant to come together as a community and lean on one another for support. We cannot, we're not an island. We can't do it by ourselves. The more you try or think that you could do it by yourself, we're just going to have, like, I could repost this video in another three months and another six months, and it'll be the same problems. We have to seek others. And again, I'm going to emphasize, it's got to be someone who's made it on the other side of the recovery, not somebody who's in it. And also someone who is not asking you to track your food because it's what's eating you, not what you're eating. It's, it's the emotions and figuring that stuff out. So P is the plan. It's the plan that is going to give you the process to heal. So I guess P could also stand for process because it is a process to have this happen like overnight is just not, it's, it's as much as like we're, we're praying and wishing for it. What I will say is this, I'm currently working with a private client right now. And by the way, I have one spot open for a private client at this time. Um, so if you are interested, just um, send me a direct message or send an email to Dana at realfit.tv and I'll talk and we'll talk. So my private client came to me a couple months ago, literally within like, I mean, it was a short two months ago. She was in the throes of binge eating, like bad, like labeling it as bad in that it was crippling her life. It was like, I can't control it. I, I'm, I'm desperate for help. So we started talking actually two times a week. And, and she, I have a whole guide, guidance modules, self-guided that. So she started doing that work as well, plus talking to me two times a week. Do you know our call yesterday, she actually, we went from two times a week to like once a week, the last few couple of weeks. And now yesterday she's like, you know what? I'm like feeling good enough that I think I can, I'm empowered to, as much as we love our conversations, she's like, can we not talk? next week on the same day, but maybe push it out a little bit. So we're actually going to do a week and a half and then a week and a half. And I mean, even, I mean, it's just, it was amazing to see, see the progress of her healing. She has been dealing with binge eating for decades, for a really long time. It has consumed her life. And it got to the point that it was destroying like her progress of moving forward in any area. And so that is the power of talking and working with someone through a plan where you feel safe, you feel supported, you feel heard, you can talk about your emotions, you have a way to actually explore this and get answers for yourself. I'm not just feeding her answers. She, it's a, it's, it's a self-discovery process. I have the process, but you figure that stuff out on your own. And then when that stuff is like figured out, you're like, <gasps> Oh my God. <laughs> like it is like, I don't know. You feel almost high from it because you're like to get answers of the chaos when it feels like there's no reason for it at all. And you're able to find some reasons and connections. It's so powerful. So that is where the food behaviors begin to heal. So that's very, very exciting. So even if you have struggled for decades, I'm telling you that there is a system and a process that works. And it's just that you've been guided to look in areas that actually can't help you solve this. That's all that's been happening because our fitness and diet industry will just keep you in the problem because there's a lot of, there's a lot of money out there to keep you in the problem, right? If you think you're broken, you're going to throw a lot of money at like, I need to fix myself. And like with diet creams and pills and all the products and things like that. Right. And it's just like consuming all of that stuff. So when we can kind of see that and step back, you're like, huh, I don't think I want to participate in that anymore, that anymore, right? I'm ready to invest in myself and my health and my well-being and my sanity, right? So, um, all right, just want to check. Ah, hi, D. So, um, okay, so I also wanted to share. All right, so that's our STOP, right? So S, be willing to see that it's become such a problem. Like, I can't move forward. I have to deal with it, all right? I can't continue to just pretend it's not there. T, talk with someone who is able to help you see it from an objective point of view. So that means more of a professional, somebody who has made it to the other side, not someone who's still in the problem. O is observe. So we want to be able to observe our behaviors between the eating compulsions. It's not within the behavior itself because it's too much, too strong 
It's too comp like compulsive, too strong. So in between that, what's really going on? Really get into the nuances of our behaviors and our patterns and what's really happening there and start to work at that, which brings me to P, which is get a plan together. It's the plan of the process to heal. If it has taken you decades to develop this behavior and snowball it to this point, it's going to take a little bit of time to unpack that and to heal that. OK, so I want to give you a little bonus of like what your plan should include. OK, so regardless if you work with me or you work with another professional, right, even if you decide to go talk to a therapist or something like that, I just wanted to give you a little three point guideline of what you want to be working through in your plan. This is important. OK, this might be right or downers for you guys. All right. You guys still with me? All right. Hi, Susan. Hello, hello. Um, okay, so number one, your plan should include a written down picture of what you want your life to be like without the food addiction. It has to be in writing. You got to get it down on paper because this step is completely overlooked so many times. I, I'm like, it kind of blows me away. It's like, how do you know what you're working towards unless you can even see that there's a possibility that I could have a life without this food behavior, without this ex exercise addiction behavior, without hating on myself, without trying to lose weight, you know, weight all the time, like constantly chasing the weight loss. So you must, your plan must include, it must begin with the end in mind. I learned this from a coach and it was actually a business coach years ago. And it has stuck because it makes so much freaking sense. If you don't even know where you're going, then no wonder why you're going to flounder and you're going to struggle and you're not going to know how to get there because you're not giving your brain the ways to solve to bring you to that end point. If it's elusive and you have it in your head of like, oh, you know, I, I really wish and it's pie in the sky and you don't believe yourself. Again, I can't emphasize enough working with a professional who can believe in you until you believe in yourself. And I do that. I do it really well. I can see it. And I always have. Even before I was a diet recovery coach, even as a fitness coach, I could see things and potential in people and in my clients before they could see it in themselves. It's like a superpower of mine. <laughs> I have it and I'm going to use the shit out of it <laughs> so I can use it with you for sure. So getting it down on paper, what is your life like? without this problem. And if you have a hard time seeing that, that's exactly why I have my plan and my program for my clients, because that's something we work on literally for months because you first put it down and it's like, oh my God, I don't believe this. This is bullshit. <laughs> like you got to kind of work through all of the stuff that comes up of like, God forbid you dare to dream. God forbid you have an idea of like this, this awesome life of what you want your life to be. Right. We've got to get it down. Okay. So that plan has to be like, that has to be part of your plan. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, now going from the future, number two, we have to look to the past. Your plan has to include a way to take a look at past um, understanding your upbringing understanding it in a way that maybe it can be very triggering. Maybe there's trauma there and trauma Trauma is just something that happened that continues to affect your life today. It doesn't have to be as extreme. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's really painful. Uh, other times it's just something that happened that caused us to believe something about ourselves and therefore conditioned us to hold us back for the entire rest of our lives. It can show up in relationships, in your finances, in your career. So we, you need your plan to look at patterns from the past that were created back there that are still showing up today because that is keeping you from your future. <laughs> so number three of your plan needs to include the unconditional support in the present moment to bridge the gap between number two and number one. So this is not something, once again, you can like as much as you may be gung ho and you're excited in the beginning, like my, you know, like, okay, I got this plan together and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. What happens 
what happens when you go through a week like I had last week? I had a really rough week last week. I had um, set out a couple things in business and was planning on some things and it didn't work out. And it hurt me. I felt like, oh my God, I put all this effort out and this isn't working. And it set me back a little bit. You know what I have? I have two business coaches to catch me. So they could talk me off the ledge and they can support me. So then I can be the best diet recovery coach to my community because I can pick myself back up and I'm like, okay, because they've made it. They know they're on the other side, right? So, so that is, you know, just important to know that to do it on your own, it's just, it's fine when you're like all gung ho and excited, right? January, let's say like January of the year. And then that wanes. And then what happens? So I, I teach my clients, you know, and I, I've taught this in the Roadmap to Food Freedom, which, by the way, I have a live event in May. May 15th is a, a live event if you'd like to join me for going through the Roadmap to Food Freedom. I included the link around this video. Um, hold the vision and trust the process. So that's this is what I mean. Your plans got to include these three things. We got to have the vision. We have to understand a bit of our past to make sense of it. And then how do you get support today, right? So hold the vision and trust the process. But what's the process? Can you trust your own process? Or do you have a guide or a system in place that you're like, okay, wow. Like I have a, full, a huge community of women that I can share testimonial after testimonial with you about their own unique starting point where they came in with their relationship with food or themselves or something they were looking to heal. And they have their own success story. And some of them, like, it's a process, right? Um, but they were able to, even if they couldn't completely hold the vision, you know what I do? I do, I hold the vision for them. And we keep circling back to that. We keep circling back to that. And I allow my clients to show up with tears. And you're like, however you are, however you are, let's, let's just be who we are. I'm really tired of faking it with the rest of the world and having to just put on the smiley face all the time. So that part is so important to get the support. So your plan has to include community support and not from just your friends and peers who are still in the problem. I cannot emphasize that enough. I cannot emphasize it enough. We'll still continue to have the same conversation in the next three months, if that's the case, or six months or a year from now. Uh, so it's got to be with somebody who's like, oh, I've been to the other side. And here's some things I can show and give some insights to help you through this rough patch that you're having right now, to provide some insight, to provide some of that objective perspective. You can't quite see it when you're in it, right? So important and so vital. All right. So that is my uh, STOP, how to stop and break the food addiction cycle. Uh, regardless if you are addicted to just food in general or have addictive behaviors towards specific foods or feel like that calling of like food is just taking over your life. So thanks for tuning in today, you guys. I look forward to hearing the comments of my replay viewers. Um, so I did include a couple links right around this video. Number one, my roadmap to food freedom. The next event is in May. You are welcome to uh, participate in that. Whether you're here in person, I also am going to provide a way for you to zoom in. Uh, it's an all-day event. And then I'm also looking at another virtual event possibly in June. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. But also that if you've been following me for a while and you're like, enough is enough. I've seen Dana talk a lot about this for a long time and I'm ready to work with her. I also just join the mentorship. Join the mentorship. And on that page, it's uh, realfit.tv slash mentorship. And on that page, if you'd like to have a conversation with me about it first, we're absolutely, you're welcome to do that. Uh, so there's a link on that page for you to book a call with me. So that that could be the next step for you too. Um, if there's any a particular story you want to share with me personally, you're always welcome to DM me. And, um, and if we want to talk about a one-to-one -one scenario, like I was just sharing with my one client who in, in a very short period of time, accelerated results where she actually felt free from me. <laughs> That's something that I promise you, I am not going to be another crutch in your life. I empower my clients to be able to like live their lives. Do they want to come and talk to me and stay in the community? Yes, uh, because we, we have a lot of fun. <laughs>
<laughs> However, that's very different from creating a codependent relationship. That's not what this is. You don't need more rules. You don't need more like of that kind of energy. Nope, that's not what it is. Um, you're going to figure out how to, how to build your own confidence, how to figure out what feels good, what feels right and what feels wrong in your life to be able to navigate that. You're going to figure out what your boundaries are because we develop the skill set. But a lot of it is just validation and feedback and insight. And we do that as a community also, right? In my mentorship program, there's a Zoom call we have once a week that are, it's just magic. Every week I'm like, oh my God, these women and like what they share and how they support each other. It's just amazing. So if you love me, you're going to love them. And a few of them had joined on our live today. So, um, so they can speak to that. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to seeing you register for the roadmap. I would love, love, love to actually work with you for a day. That would be amazing. Um, talk about making some progress on your plan. All the things I talked about today will be taken care of in the roadmap to food freedom, that's for sure. And um, and even beyond that, uh, my mentorship program is a 12-month program, and that is for good reason because we can't undo decades of this pattern and for in just a little, a couple months. I mean, there's, it's a process, right? So although my private client just experienced like, oh my God, I'm ready to, to let go a little bit. There's still, uh, there's still modules ahead. There's still work to be done. So I, I love the whole year to work with a client because it allows us to go through the change of the seasons. Seasons, yes, winter, spring, summer, fall, but also seasons of our life of like different um, family events that we're invited to. How do we show up to those? How do we respond? How are we setting boundaries? We've got to be able to navigate that and, and figure that out. So it takes a bit of time to do that. So if I were to have a three month program for you, I feel like it would be doing a disservice because, um, there's, we need some space. We need some space to work on ourselves. And that is what I uh, provide in my program. So, all right, you guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you. And if, again, if this topic you think is helpful for someone you love, please share, share it with them. And um, I will see you on the next one. Mwah.